Over the past few years, purchasing a Commodore REU has not been for the faint of heart. That changed, however, around the end of 2022, when Frenetic, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, released the RAD Expansion Unit Cartridge. Let's delve into what this is, what you can do with it, and how you can get your hands on one. Near the end of 2022, the community was offered this very cool open source project on GitHub. The design is the sister project to two other amazing designs, the Sidekick 64 and the Sidkick. I won't go into those as they both deserve their very own video to highlight these amazing designs. This is about the RAD expansion and RAD it is. The RAD expansion is at its core two different RAM expansion devices. First is a recreation of the Berkeley Softworks GeoRAM cartridge with a capacity that far exceeds that of the original. The original GeoRAM cartridge came in a 512K or half meg configuration. The RAD expansion expands that to a maximum size of four megabytes. The original GeoRAM cartridge actually only came into existence due to chip shortages in the 1980s, resulting in Commodore being unable to meet the demand for their REUs. As Berkeley Softworks, the company behind the then popular GEOS application, relied heavily on RAM expansion, the GeoRAM cartridge was born. The second type of RAM expansion that this cartridge provides is a recreation of the Commodore REU. This was a RAM expansion device with a dedicated RAM expansion controller or REC chip. Prior to this cartridge arriving on the scene, we had very limited options when it came to Commodore styled REUs and slightly more options for GeoRAM recreations. There are more options for the GeoRAM flavor of RAM expanders because those do not use the REC chip mentioned above. This makes the GeoRAM style of RAM expansion much easier to recreate, as REC chips have been out of production for a very long time now. An open source project called NeoRAM exists in GitHub and allows users with fine soldering skills to build a cartridge up to 2 megabytes in capacity. Ownership of a REC-based REU RAM expansion cartridge has been limited to getting your hands on an original cartridge. So what's the difference between the Commodore RU and GeoRAM? Well, the Commodore RU contains the aforementioned REC chip, which provides the logic required to swap banks of memory on request. The GeoRAM cartridge has no such logic and relies on using a mapped in page scheme. Unfortunately, at the time, not much other than GEOS supported that RAM expansion. Today, the thriving Commodore community has developed other freeware applications that can take advantage of GeoRAM, so its usefulness has been increased over the decades since its inception. Outside of owning an original REU prior to the RAD expansion, the REU could be experienced through the implementation of it in Gideon's Ultimate 64. That wonderful creation is rather difficult to get your hands on at the moment in this world of chip shortages. The only other way these days requires that you have rather deep pockets. The prices for Commodore REUs have skyrocketed in the past years. The more commonplace REUs are the 317XX series made by Commodore. These include the 1700, 1764, and 1750, and at today's prices can run in the hundreds of dollars. Even more expensive are the CMD 1750XL, which sports a maximum of two megabytes, or the chip level design Super 1750 clone that sports 512K of RAM expansion. These two options also contain the REC logic, but can cost twice or more than the Commodore devices. As you can see, the RAD expansion is a welcome addition to the contingent of hardware available to today's budding Commodore enthusiast. So let's have a look at the RAD expansion cartridge and what it can do for you. 
The RAD expansion board is comprised of two parts, a hardware and software component. It also does require that you own a Raspberry Pi 3A+, B+, or Pi 0W2. Other older or newer variants of the Raspberry Pi won't do. The RAD expansion board simply plugs into the pin headers on your Raspberry Pi and the software distribution that you can obtain from the RAD expansion GitHub page goes on your micro SD card and is plugged into the Pi. For power, you have two options. You can power the Pi externally, which is recommended on the GitHub page, or if you have a strong enough power supply connected to your 64, something like a beefy Ray Carlson power supply, you can have the 64 power the RAD expansion by leaving the jumper in place on the top of the cartridge board. Once you've done this, you're essentially ready to use your RAD expansion. By default, if you've not modified any of the configuration files, the RAD expansion menu will appear on your 64 when you power on the machine. You're greeted with some cool graphics at the bottom of the screen and some catchy music playing in the background. If you prefer not to be dropped into the RAD menu on PowerUp, there are configuration files on the RAD expansion software distribution that you've put on your SD card that can tell the cartridge to boot to basic. You can even set the cartridge to default to a specific type of memory expansion and capacity at PowerUp. In this case, I have the cartridge set to boot to basic, defaulting to a 16 megabyte REU. Once in the menu, you can now select the type of RAM expansion you want and how much of it. For GeoRAM, you can select up to 4 megabytes, and for the RU, you can select up to 16 megabytes. It should be noted that the 16 megabyte RUs never existed before in original hardware. And although by today's standards it may not sound like a lot, by 1980 standards it really is mind blowing that amount of memory. Another interesting feature of this cartridge is its built-in file browser where you can select to run programs directly from the SD card or mount and run GeoRAM or RU images. A very interesting thing you can immediately do with your RAD expansion is start playing new V movies. These are 16 megabyte movie files that can be loaded into memory and run when in the 16 megabyte RU configuration. You can have a lot of fun with that and spend hours watching these movie files. These can all be found on the internet. Once downloaded, place them in the REU folder on the SD card, navigate to them through the menu, and hit return twice to play. From the RAD menu, you can review your menu options by pressing H. This brings up a list of available commands. Return takes you back out of the help screen, and if you're finished with the menu, pressing the X key will take you to basic. The RAD expansion is compatible with both the 64 and 128. Another popular thing that you can try out right away is Sega's Sonic. It's an amazing recreation of the original game for the Commodore 64 that pushes the capabilities of the machine. This game, however, does require a RAM expansion unit to work. If your RAM expansion cartridge is large enough, you can load the entire game into the REU, so no further disk access would be required. Luckily, we have our RAD expansion cartridge, and it can be anything we want. So with mine still configured as a 16 meg REU, it's just a matter of loading the game, responding to the questions presented during the loading process, and you'll be able to play this amazing game. Further along in the game loading process, which actually doesn't take all that long in real time, you're asked if you want to load the entire game into memory. Feel free to do that, as it doesn't take long. Don't forget to plug your joystick into port 2 so you can tell it when you've swapped disks. Then, you won't have to think about disks anymore. Just play and have fun. Now you've seen the cartridge and what it can do. Now comes the question, where do you get it? The RAD expansion is an open source project. This means that virtually everything you need to know to build one yourself has been provided on the GitHub project page. As it is a non-commercial product, you're unlikely to find these available from your favorite online commoner shops. And given the fine soldering skills required to build your own, 
This really does eliminate availability to most enthusiasts. I've done a small run of these boards for people that don't have the soldering skills and will continue to do so. If you're unable to build one yourself and would like me to do the heavy lifting, reach out to me and I'll set you up with one. I charge for my time and cost of materials, but rest assured it won't break the bank like original RAM expanders can. A word of caution to those shopping for a pre-built board. Builders these days are in the habit of using hot air rework stations to solder surface mounted components. Although this method does work, it can thermally damage the electronic components and the PCB substrate. The proper way to solder surface mounted components is with a quality reflow oven following the reflow profile of the solder paste used. Hot air workstations and cheap IR reflow ovens can thermally shock the components through hot spots, diminishing the expected lifespan of the components being soldered to the board. They can also physically damage the PCB itself. And those that hand solder the components well, unless the person is really skilled, the resultant board can be a real mess. Problems with hand soldering boards by unskilled individuals can result in cold solder joints, poorly soldered chips, solder bridges, even burning solder pads off the PCB. For my builds, I use a professional stencil printer and non-IR reflow oven to solder all of my surface mounted boards. I've been soldering surface mounted boards for years and have the skills and equipment to do it right. One other thing to be on the watch for when building one yourself or having someone build it for you is that the PCB should always be a NIG. Tin plated boards will eventually clog up your cartridge port. They're simply bad for your machine and shouldn't be considered. Always ask for gold plated boards or walk away. Keep in mind that cheaper is not always better. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Rad Expansion Unit Cartridge. If there are any particular topics you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Click the bell icon to be notified of new uploads. Likes and comments are always appreciated. We'll see you next time on 8-Bit Resurgence. Bye for now.